Thank you all for being here today. Tom, thank you for coming back into the fray. Uh, it's a, a great confidence that it gave me to have Tom Pocken come back into public service and work at the Workforce Commission with these uh, very capable people who represent uh, the working men and women of the state. Uh, David, I want to thank you for being a great partner, uh, for being uh, part of the Brain Trust that's really made uh, Texas into this place where people continue uh, to move to, and about a thousand people a day continue to move into the state of Texas. I mean, uh, the, the, the idea that uh, with all of the news that we've had in the last 120 days, with the financial markets uh, 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 cratering, with all of the uh, international discombobulation, with all the things that are going on, and within the last 30 days, Boone, we've had two major announcements, two major announcements in this state uh, that I'm going to uh, touch on um, in, in, in just a, in a few minutes, but the, I, I, it's a really interesting time for me, as, as you said, David, but uh, I, I look back on it uh, 24 years ago. I came as a young, uh, very raw West Texas legislator uh, to come and, and uh, be engaged in public service, and, and um, uh, th there's... I don't think I've, I'd ever been as excited, uh, Doc, as I was that morning in 1985 when I was sworn in that, as, as a Texas state legislator. And, uh, and I have that same feeling right now, David, when I, the, the last few days over in the legislature, those of you that have been there, uh, I, I, I would suggest that you probably have seen and felt the same excitement. Yeah, we're challenged. We're challenged with some uh, economic times that we didn't have, but the fact of the matter is, uh, it, it's really a, an exciting time. It's palpable in the air of, of members coming together, wanting to work together, the exchange of ideas and what have you. And, and, and a historic moment uh, to, uh, to be in the House chamber uh, to, to see Joe Strauss elected uh, as a, a new speaker of the, of the Texas House of Representatives. And I'm just thinking there as I'm looking over that audience that, that Joe's there standing on the shoulders of, 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 of a giant. Uh, and, and I'm talking about Tom Craddock and what Tom and, 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 and we together as conservatives have done in the state of Texas. And I'm very proud of, of, of what we've done. And I'm excited that, that Joe's going to be there and, and, and his uh, uh, style of leadership and uh, bringing people together and, and working to, together to continue Texas on this. This is just amazing path. I can promise you that the other 49 governors across the country would dearly have loved to have seen Caterpillar move into Seguin, Texas, uh, in their state, to be able to announce almost $200 uh, million fiscal uh, uh, build up there, Barry, uh, the, the 1,400 jobs. I mean, do you think Arnold Schwarzenegger would love to have been able to announce a billion dollar plant in a port city like Corpus Christi did last Friday? You bet you they would. And Boone, I think that's the, that's the difference in Texas and some of the other states, is that uh, they're facing some, some amazingly difficult times. I mean, David made a, a, a great statement. I mean, you know, when you're 40 billion in debt, what's another billion, right? I mean, it's the, 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 we say that with all due respect, we want California to succeed. We want those states to, to, to look at us. I mean, if they want the blueprint of how you get your state on track, you don't spend all the money. You have a tax structure that's fair and balanced. You have a regulatory climate where people know the, the, the predictability that if they come in and they put that much money in on, on a physical plant, they're going to know that they're going to get their permits and they know that there's going to be a legislature in place that's not going to uh, raise taxes on them, that's not going to um, pull the regulatory rug out from under them, that's going to continue to have a legal system where they know they're not going to be frivolously sued. And if they're going to come in and, and, and risk their capital, that they will know that these are people that understand the importance and the value of education and to fund an accountable public school system so that the skilled workforce is in place. That's the blueprint. That's what every state should look at. If they want to have a reflection of Texas in their economy, that is how you do it. And David and his colleagues made hard decisions. You got criticized a little bit, David. And, I, and from time to time, those arrows went through you and hit me. 
But the fact is, we collectively sat there together and said, listen, what is in the best interest for the state of Texas? We're going to be criticized for reducing spending. But in 2003, when we had that $10, $10 billion budget deficit, we also prioritized, Clady, just like you do in your business. You're making decisions like every one of you in here about resources are going down. How are we going to restructure our business to be prepared for the future when the economy does turn around so that we can react and be nimble and be flexible? That's exactly the conversations that David and Tom and I had in 2003. And we prioritized. We put a billion eight more than had been spent in the previous budget in the public education. We prioritized because we knew that that was important. And we made some hard decisions. And we filled that budget gap without raising the taxes, without putting the burden on people like you and people that you represent. And there's an interesting thing that happened in a short period of time. When we came back into session in 2005, we had an $8 billion budget surplus. The people of the state of Texas responded. They understood that there was stability, predictability in what they were doing in Austin, Texas. And I'm really proud of the team that, that we, have, we have put together here and the legislature seeing the wisdom of things like the Enterprise Fund so that we can go compete with South Carolina or Louisiana or, or, or other states that are out there competing for those businesses. Let me tell you, as folks go through this process now of deciding what their business is going to look like, where are they going to want to be, Texas is going to be at the top of their list as well it should be. But we have to be competitive. It's the reason that, that, that the legislature worked with us to come up with the Emerging Technology Fund. It's the reason that David led uh, the charge on passing a cancer initiative that is bringing $300 million a year into the state of Texas to, f to find the cure for cancer, which is first and foremost a, a, a most extraordinary and wonderful pursuit. But while we're doing that, we're also going to be creating jobs and wealth and spin-off companies and all types of things that, frankly, we haven't even thought of yet. That's what's happening in Texas. That's the reason people are moving here. And with that great story out there preceding us, we knew back in August and September that there were going to be some rough days ahead for us. That although we are about as strong as we could be economically and the decisions that we had made had, had, had pushed back the, the day of reckoning on the, on the, on the economic side, that we're not here alone. We're the number one exporting state in the nation. When the economies go down substantially around the world and countries quit spending that money on our manufactured goods and Texas sees the export go market going down, we know how that's going to impact us. When we see those dollars quit being loaned out, Boone will talk to you a little bit, I'm sure, today about the impact of those financial markets. Washington, in their wisdom of putting $700 billion into those financial markets, and then the idea that you can't get a loan today is absolutely mind-boggling. It was thoughtless, is what it was, and it's hurting our country. But the fact is, we have to be prepared to deal with that. And that's the reason that, that David and I are going to be making some tough decisions over the course of the next 138 days. But we're going to continue. You know what kind of decisions we're going to make. You're not going to wake up and find that philosophically we've changed our mind. We know what works, Tom. We know that if we will be fiscally prudent, that if we will prioritize our spending, that if we will continue to send the message of predictability in our regulatory climate, if we'll continue to prioritize to, to create that skilled workforce, people will continue to move to this state. And I will suggest 
that although a very difficult and, and, and trying time for this country and this world, that Texas can be the place that, that, that benefits as well as any other state. Because as people come and they, they make those decisions of consolidation, let's move to Texas. Because we know there we will have the opportunity to grow and to succeed in the future when this economy turns around.